think um morning shira just want to um, very quickly read one verse um and it's a very brief um thought it's uh, proverbs 27 and verse 1 okay proverbs 27 verse 1 it says do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth right do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth okay so well um uh, again in the book of um, james we see uh, james talks about you know boasting and arrogance about okay we will go here we will do this we will do that etc so when you look at this verse it's talking about boasting not about planning not about thinking ahead okay but uh, the thought i just wanted to share with us is that you know um it, it's not that our tomorrows are not in his hands okay our future is in god's hands so it's not out of a fear but the thing is the things that we can do today okay uh, it's it's a reminder for us not to procrastinate not to delay the inevitable right so the things that we are we are capable of doing today we are capable of finishing today let's do that because we do not know what would be the challenges for tomorrow right what would be the demands for tomorrow you know we can look at it that way what would be the demands what would be the challenges what would be the new responsibilities that are required right for tomorrow so if you have an opportunity if you have the time the ability to do something today um then do it okay so instead of boasting for you do not know what a day may bring forth okay so we might plan something saying okay um, you know i have some submissions but i'll do it tomorrow right but tomorrow there could be something else which is required of us something else which is demanded of us right uh, and so do today itself right so yeah i just wanted to leave us with that thought we'll pray and then we'll start father we we thank you lord for this uh, exhortation for this reminder lord that uh, yes our uh, future our days our times are in your hands but lord we do not know uh, we don't have full knowledge of what the demands for tomorrow would be what the requirements for for our time and abilities would be for tomorrow god so lord as much as uh, lord is within our capacity and ability to do things to complete things today lord we pray that we will not delay lord we pray that we will not unnecessarily put off things um that we can do today that we can complete today lord we thank you for the wisdom that is in your word we pray that we will apply it and see the fruit of it lord uh, each and every day god we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen okay okay so um yeah we're looking at teamwork we are looking at uh, last class we saw um you know how building a team when when we are building a team there are two options one is we recruit a team and uh, the other option is that we develop the team which we already have okay recruiting is okay it's a privilege it's uh, it's it's a uh, you know in the, in the sense you have the opportunity to start from scratch i right? use uh, meaning start from zero so there's no team and you pick and choose the team you get to do that and and then you pick get to pick and choose okay these are the qualities that i want in the team member and these are the abilities i want and then you get to do that right but some there are times when most often it's it's like we are in a situation where we are placed in a team in order to lead a team and we did not choose the team but the team was already there already present already functioning okay so in that case we need to be able to develop the team develop every member in the team and like we saw you know uh, building a team it starts with us it starts with building us ourselves whatever things that we want to see in the team member the first thing is to make sure that it is seen in us right whatever whatever demands i put on the team member you know do i meet the demand in terms of time in terms of um, you know skill in terms of well uh, skills could be different in terms of you know completion of things and quality of work done do i also have the same things or do i develop the same things in me okay so it starts with us because every individual contributes 
in order to make the team accomplish, right? make the team win, right? Okay, so if you look at qualities of uh, you know of a team player, okay, of someone to be in the team, um, John Maxwell lists down seventeen qualities. Uh, we'll just quickly go over each of those, right? The first one is adaptable. Okay, so what does it mean to be adaptable? Adaptable means to be willing to change. Okay, so willing to change, willing to learn, teachable, and willing to change, which means a person should carry some level of humility in order to do that, right? When somebody says, okay, this is not good, the way you're doing things is not good or it's not right, you need to change. And if somebody says, no, I've been doing like this for five years, 10 years, I will not change, then that is not a good team player, right? Because you're looking at, uh, you know, problems or situations or conflicts uh, that needs to be overcome or things that you need to accomplish as a team. And it requires some changes, a change in strategy, right? Um, so that would that would happen in any game where normally, you know, like when we, whenever there is a break, you know, if you look at a cricket match, whenever there is a break for a, for a, a drink break, right, water break, they are discussing strategies, you know, how do we do this? You know, do we, and you can see, you can you can see a change uh, after the break, like if they are slowing down, or if they are playing it safe, or if they're taking risks, you can see that change. Right? There is a change in strategy. Now the uh, the, the, the captain might change things. The captain might say, "Okay, now no, you don't bowl." Right? Especially in the T20 matches, you'd see that okay, somebody is opening the game with a spinner, right? And if you play cricket, you know, it's like normally when the ball is, uh, the shine is gone and uh, the ball is able to spin, that is when you bring in a spinner. But then, you know, sometimes, you know, they just bring in a spinner, right? And then start the game with it. So it's a, so the spinner cannot say, hey, uh, you know, this ball is new, it's still got a shine on it. So I, I won't bowl now. You know, you trust the captain, you trust, or, or, and the captain also explains why. He, he or she wants to do that, and then you go with it, right? So then one has to be adaptable, willing to change, teachable, right? So, so in order to be adaptable, here are a few things, right? Which means I need to be willing to learn and willing to do new things, right? So uh, some of, you know, this, all of us are creatures of habit, right? Which means that we... Uh, we don't like to change because if uh, if something is working well, if something is you know we are used to it, uh, we we stick to it, right? We don't want to change that, right? Because change is uncomfortable. Yes or no? Yeah, change is uncomfortable. Which means that yeah, I'm already doing this, and you know you're interrupting it, you're disrupting what I normally do. Right? Change is uncomfortable. Okay, that's why you know we all always you know if it's a Church service, and we would always want to sit in that same place, right? We we always have that favorite chair, favorite place, and you know sometimes in church people get very upset if they don't get that same place because you know it, for all various reasons, you know it's maybe under the fan, maybe they get a good view, you know, of the state, whatever, you know. So so that's the thing, right? So but the thing is to be willing to learn new things, to be willing to do new things. Okay, so as we grow older. This willingness to learn keeps diminishing. You know, if you look at a child, the child wants to learn new things. Everything is new, right? The child is asking 101 questions. Like if you're going from one place to another, you know, it's like asking, what is this? What is that? Why is that? And sometimes these questions seem like, you know, foolish questions. You know, why is this child asking all these questions? You know, what time will we reach? Have we reached yet? You know, all these things. But the child is very inquisitive, curious, learning. And every day is a learning experience, something new, right? But as we grow old, older, we sometimes are not as curious about the world or about things or even about, you know, God. If we have been believers for many years, we are like, that That changes, right? That, that, that ability or that desire to learn comes down, right? But we need to be willing to learn and grow. 
and not just learn but also apply it like do things okay um to be adaptable secondly we need to be emotionally secure in the sense okay, not to be threatened by new things not to be threatened by change you know i don't i still remember the first time email we heard the word email we heard the word internet and we heard the word you know like those you remember those internet parlors used to be there you you had to pay a huh? i mean internet cafes or internet places where we you you had to pay like something like 60 rupees for an hour it's like almost sometimes it was more right to use the internet yeah yeah use 10 rupees okay when we started it was 60 rupees or maybe even 100 rupees for you know because it this place had ac and all that and for an hour can you just imagine and uh, so it was that kind of a scenario and i remember we being very very scared threatened you know it was a new thing and we didn't want to go there and you know uh, so for a long time we did not even have an email id okay so now it's unheard of right the first thing that you do is you have multiple email ids right but we took a long time we will go uh, i remember me and my wife will be going on the bike and we say should we go try no okay don't want we'll try some other time you know we're just uncomfortable with it what you know the newness of things and so um, we might be threatened by change right threatened by okay what is this new person saying what is this new thing that we have to do you know maybe um what is this new responsibility that i have to do maybe i you know you, we we file in we find ourselves maybe think ourselves as being inadequate and so on so so we need to be emotion emotionally secure and not threatened by it okay the third thing is to be creative not be afraid of doing new things or doing things differently right so uh, yes there is a certain comfort and efficiency in doing things the way we used to do but if something would change or make things more productive right don't be afraid of being creative doing things differently okay okay then service minded which means focusing on others we looked at it already right um so being willing to serve being willing to help so that is also part of being adaptable uh, like someone said uh, i think it was john c maxwell's quote ask not what your team can do for you but ask what you can do for your team okay this was actually a quote by i think john f kennedy one of the presidents of the or us who said ask not what you you know what your country can do for you but ask what you can do for your country so yeah so first thing is adaptable adaptability okay so being quick being able to adaptable change um, it always helps right because when you in another word that you can think of is agile okay what is agile agility agility it means speed right speed uh, being agile is speed um so being able to move and being able to do things quickly right and um, so that is adaptable right being adaptable the second one that we need to look at is collaborative okay which means the ability to work together okay so you remember that it is a team right we're talking about a team we're talking about a group of different individuals being put together for a particular task to accomplish a particular goal okay so one needs to work together one needs to think about the other person one needs to support the other person um one needs to be there is there is a certain amount of give and take in order to work together so so that means collaborate work together um another word that we can think of is cooperate right so somebody does not want to cooperate does not want to collaborate then you can be sure that, that 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 person is not going to stay long in the team or is going to cause a lot of difficulties for the team right collaborate okay so working together um, agreeably is cooperation and working together aggressively or you know is collaborate which means you are working towards it you're putting your effort you're putting your time and accomplishing things okay so first of all perception is you see each teammate as a collaborator 
that we are working together for the same purpose and not as competitors right so the corinthian church had that issue had that challenge what what was the issue they were actually comparing they forgot the fact that everybody is used of god right that we are serving the same god that each minister is actually in the same field right so paul had to clarify and he said you know i saw somebody else waters but it god who gives the increase okay so within a team within an organization one needs to have that perspective that we are collaborators and not competitors okay now we could have different teams like in a in a certain organization we could have different teams we could have you know certain goals that each of us need to achieve and so on but if we are going to see each other as competitors uh, and working towards pushing down the other person in order to for me to win right then it's it's not going to help okay so it's not a competition team you know within a team it's not a competition right so we need to uh, have that kind of a perception of that perspective that we are collaborating um, and our attitude is again to be supportive and not be sub suspicious of the other person suspicion mean that you're always thinking what is that other person going to do okay what is that other person going to say um, is he going to stab me in the back or you know that kind of a thing you're always very careful of the other person so which means that that doesn't help to trust the other person well the reality is that you know maybe that person you know did something or acted in a certain way that where your trust is broken right but the thing is not to continue in that same manner right to to change it to fix it right so that you can move on and continue to be supportive and not be suspicious right now all this is going to take effort right it's going to take effort it's going to take some amount of investment but it needs to be done in order to work together right okay so the focus what should the focus be the focus should be on the team okay which means that um we looked at how we need to be other focus in order to be able to work with people right preparing to preparing to um, uh, you know work with people win with people we looked at how we need to be other focus the same way when we are working together as a team we need to have that team focus right and not the focus on just me myself not the focus on the self okay a uh, good question to ask ourselves you know when we went to see that whether i am collaborative is to ask that question you know does the team become slower or find more difficult things more difficult to work with when i am involved right if i am part of the team do i slow things down right do i do i put the brakes always and if i'm not in the team you know do i do they find it more agile and more able to accomplish things so that's a question that we need to ask so which means that then i need to change right if i'm out of the picture then the team seems to function well what is the reason you know is it because i'm not adaptable is it because i'm not working together i'm not you know i'm not supportive you know am i putting the brakes on the whole move right so so that's the question to ask ourselves okay the third one is commitment okay now these are you know characteristics which we have you know we know uh, which are very necessary okay am i committed to the task am i committed to the team right so the commitment level actually determines how how much we can contribute and how much we uh, uh, you know uh, we can actually take the team forward right commitment if you look at ministry you know commitment to the call right commitment to the task at hand right commitment to uh, wherever god has placed us and whatever god has called us to do right so if one is not committed to it then definitely all other things all other efforts and everything will also be half hearted right if it doesn't have the full commitment if you look at um, you know some of the 
some of the missionaries who came from uh, i'm just thinking of uh, like who's the person who came to calcutta and then a lot of translation work that he did uh, william carey right william carey so he came here and he died here right came to india died died in india right so uh, same with david livingston right went there to africa to minister so the commitment was so strong i'm committed to this cause and how how does one become committed and how does one come to that place of oh, that's david livingston huh? okay yeah so how does one become so committed to that when you are sure of the call like when you are sure that this is what i'm called to do this is what god wants me to do then you can back it up fully with 100% commitment right because the that is you know we can give 100% and that is required right okay so maybe you know that is about the call of god and you know everything that we are called to do but then we will find ourselves working in different teams you know maybe uh, you know even as we reach the fullness of the call right even as we journey towards the fullness of the call we find ourselves working in different teams and the success of the team as a team member i am required to be committed right if i am not committed then i will not sacrifice right if i am not committed then i will not put in the effort that is required when you the effort that you put in when you are committed and the effort that you put in when you are not committed will be vast difference right because we will just be you know the just pass is enough for us anything to you know just to do above the minimum to stay in the place is enough when we are not committed right but when we are committed we will go beyond go sometimes you know we we will be willing to stretch ourselves in order to you know put in our best right okay so um difficulties test our commitment you know if you face challenges right they also expose our commitment you know when there is difficulty when there is a requirement to do certain things that the action of the individual will actually expose or you know reveal how far that person is committed right um so commitment is something something required something that is beautiful uh something that changes the whole way uh the team works okay so being committed does not depend on gifts or abilities you know that's that's one thing right um i remember you know visiting this conference going for this conference and the the sound and setup team uh they were actually doing a session this was a worship conference so the the sound and setup team was doing a session on you know what is required what are the requirements you know so they talk about the same thing you know it does not you don't need to have great abilities you don't have to have great skills but you definitely need to be committed okay saying that's the core that's the first thing so being committed does not require great abilities just because you know i have this ability i have this gifting and everything then you know i'm committed no being committed is a decision is a choice right and um it's not because of favorable situations or conditions okay um when the our commitment is based on the values things that we esteem things that we value then it will be enduring it will be long lasting okay so commitment so these are things what are we why are we looking at these we are saying okay these are things that these are characteristics that we can see in a team member okay or develop in a team member okay um fourth one is communication or communicative being communication communicative you know um so healthy effective communication brings about healthy connections healthy connections bring about better understanding and uh, you know when addition to that is when when there is better understanding the team is effective more productive okay um what brings to mind is um, uh, i don't know uh, years ago tennis you know there used to be this um, this uh, indian team mahesh bhupathi and um, leander pace 
anyone tennis no okay so leander pace mahesh bhupati you know they won a lot of things but one thing that you will notice when they play when they get on the you know court and play is um, their constant communication their rapo with each other right sometimes it feels like the other one person is thinking and the other person is doing it already so the way they move on court and you know the understanding with each, each other and they will be constantly talking encouraging each other talking to each other if you if you watch any of those old videos you will see that right mahesh bhupati and uh, leander pace uh, tennis doubles so you see that there needs to be communication right there needs to be healthy communication not toxic communication healthy so communication brings forth understanding not just when we are doing the task but even outside of it right it brings about better understanding and uh, when we have a better understanding then we we know the person we respect the person and we uh, even if there are faults we are you know we don't we don't mind overlooking it right um, okay so connection brings about uh, communication brings about connection there is understanding there is care and it becomes effective communication also clears misunderstandings right uh, it clears misunderstandings eliminates relational tension okay um so uh, so it's always a requirement you know healthy communication so which means that we need to ask questions okay we need to ask questions in order to find out right we need to share in order to express uh, what is in what, what needs to be done and what you know what is going on inside of us so both are required you know we need to speak we need to share we need to ask uh, maybe questions and we need to listen okay why these things so you know this acronym dirt you know which means don't ignore relational tension okay if there is relational tension between team members within a team it is not something to be ignored okay when we ignore it it will not go away you know maybe you know some pe sometimes people might reconcile and you know we we don't need to intervene but then if we it the, the common thing is that if we ignore with the intention that if i ignore it will go away it will pass it will not right so don't ignore relational tension and even especially if you are a team leader facilitate connection facilitate communication bring about um, a healthy communication okay right the first one is competency okay now we come to the whole thing of skill qualification ability okay so that is competence or being competent okay so if a person is uh, you know taken for a particular role in a team we need to find out or test the competency of the person skill of the person right the knowledge of the person right if it's a computer programmer need to test right if it is a person who is uh, you know you're taking on as a maybe a, as a musician you need to test right any role any responsibility you need to test the competency okay so what happens if the person is not com competent enough okay so you might make a decision saying i need to give time for this person's competency to improve now sometimes you can have that you have that luxury of giving the person time you're saying okay this person's attitude and everything is fine just the skill needs to go up okay they are teachable they are humble um they've got the right you know the right motive and everything but now their skill level needs to go up okay so sometimes we could maybe give them the time and say okay maybe it's a month maybe it's you know whatever depending on the task or depending on the urgency with which the team needs to function okay so you can actually give time or time out for a team member to increase the skill right um but then the fact is that one needs to have the skill there's no point in having someone because hey i like that person or you know um it's that person will feel left out you know if you're going to make such things you know let's uh, you know it, it, maybe in an organization you're saying okay you know that person is needy so i'm going to give them a job 
okay yeah i mean you can it's a good thing you know you can say okay i'm going to give them a job because that person you know needs money so fine but then find out whether that person's motive attitude and aptitude competency and skill is there right otherwise it's better just to give money and not take on as part of the organization right if you want to help the person give generously contribute help the person but if you're going to take in a person in order to help first think whether that person can actually manage right uh, actually have the skill will if you give time will the skill be developed because it's going to affect the team because that when you look at team it's each per person's contribution which matters right the progress of the team and so on okay so to be competent is to be committed to excellence uh, not settling for average uh, it's to be detail oriented paying attention doing the job well uh, consistent in effort right giving the best all the time okay so that is what we say when we say competent it is also the skill and learning okay um okay so i'm sure you've heard of taylor guitars right if you're missing you know one of the one of the now there are other good guitars also but taylor guitars their motive is that they when they produce uh, guitars that there will be no bad guitars in a batch okay so that's the thing suppose you um you produce something if you're in manufacturing you produce uh, let's say um something you know some phones or some some plastic items there will be some which do not match the quality which are rejects right that that's why you have export rejects clothing you know some defect some which is there which is which can't be used for a main showroom so it's discounted and sold right whereas when it comes to tailor guitar the attention to detail is so so much that there are no bad guitars in a batch okay so that is why they are so highly priced and so on you know lakh and above um so there are no bad guitars in a batch so so the attention to detail attention to yeah, um, you know the the quality is so high okay so something for us to uh something for us to learn from and be encouraged that it is possible right okay to improve competence to improve skill it requires focus it requires giving attention to details the small things you know many times the small things when we miss the small things that actually pulls us down okay in a task right um like everything is ready but one cable is not there right everything is fine but it's a small detail or that cable does not have that connector or the converter which is actually you know you can connect to the laptop or connect to the mixer whatever right so those are the small things that really matter okay okay any questions anything that you want to share here to be looked at five characteristics right okay um the uh, the other one is dependability okay can people depend on you can people count on you okay uh, it's a it's a huge thing for a team member right can that person depend are you trustworthy okay um like i remember once when we were part of another church and we were all you know we were supposed to lead the service okay we were all part of the youth we were supposed to lead the service and uh, do several different things um and then one person was supposed to lead the service now this is a methodist church right so they're supposed to lead the church service there are several things announcements everything and uh, we see that the person who is supposed to lead is not there okay the service starts at 6 so 5 o'clock is not there 5:30 5:15 we trying to call unable to contact and then we are about to start we say okay we made changes 10 minutes before the service we made changes okay you do it um you know this person is not showing up then 5 minutes before the service that person comes okay and uh, he says uh, uh, i'm sorry i could not uh, make it i was playing football okay and uh, he was wearing football whatever Uh, Jersey and uh, you know he's taking his boot and everything and we're like shocked, right? So the next time there was an opportunity, you will not, you know, you will not, yeah, you will not even consider that person, you know, unless you see 
change unless you see that okay that person has become dependable and the person says that he or she will do it they will do it or if they are unable to do it they will communicate in advance so that we can make changes right it's fine you know there are genuine reasons why a person cannot you know commit to doing things or uh, or un unable to do things maybe sickness maybe something you know some emergency some emergency it's fine but they should be able to tell or share that in advance so that the team's work does not get affected right so dependable okay so uh, how can we do that um, people are dip, dip, uh, you know are totally dependable okay the motives are pure, pure they don't put their agenda ahead of what's best for the team okay so sometimes we get our agenda mixed up okay um okay i okay i'm going to you know as a as a team you decide to do something and then there's also some things that you you say okay this i will be able to get something out of this okay or i can serve myself in this or i will get some mileage out of this you know so when we start thinking like that then we know that the motives are not pure okay so motives of your strong sense of responsibility okay so that is there you know when you give a certain task they carry it out and do that okay okay have a desire to do the things that they are capable of doing there is an interest there's an initiative so to become dependable we need to check our motives you know am i dependable can the team depend on me so that's the first question i ask you know with the, even before we ask and see you know can this this other person is this other person dependable to is to ask ourselves you know am i dependable right are my motives clear pure okay and um, we can actually even do a survey you know when i say that i will do something you know how reliable am i you know we can actually john john maxwell actually says that you need to do a you know he suggests that he recommends that you know as a team leader you know do a survey you'll find out it'll say it's be a clear you know sometimes it can be shocking you know, i thought i was dependable you know, but why maybe there are certain things we you know sometimes what happens is we excuse ourselves okay we excuse ourselves in the things that we judge others <laughs> right we are we go easy on ourselves right so so a, a, a survey would actually expose those things bring to light what is the reality okay um so when we do a survey what he suggests is you know don't defend when people say okay this is what it is don't defend yourself explain yourself and say okay this is why i you know you know that that time when i when i didn't do it this is this was the reason you know, don't defend or don't justify that okay so it's a good way to find out how dependable we are okay so another word discipline okay so we we'll just uh, you know these are very well known things but we are going through it uh, so we know it can be a checklist discipline you know is there a discipline in the person's life you know does a person have a routine uh, do i have a routine okay because discipline means that you do something even when you don't feel like doing it right you get up even when you don't feel like doing it right you do certain things and that actually exponentially you know builds our character right when you know the task needs to be done but you know when your whole system when your whole uh, you know everything within you says okay just take it easy but you despite that you go ahead and do it right um that is discipline right and every you know every person who's an achiever every person um and if, even if you think of all the apostles and paul and so on you know you see that a very high degree of discipline you know and in those days you know you think of travel it, it was not assured that you would reach the place safely it's not as safe as it is right now where we have four lane and you know the the the, the percentage of accidents is really rate of accidents comes down and you know it was not like that right because weather one is the climate weather second one you know robbers and you know decoy thieves uh maybe animals you know, all these things were very real dangers right so 
and the mode of transport was very simple it was not advanced like you know like we have now so you think about it you see that hey they they really risk their lives and it's it takes a lot of discipline to get up in the morning and say okay today i'm going there and uh, uh, i'm going there with this intention that i'm going to share the gospel and see what god want me to do and i'm going to maybe plant a church and train those people and so that the work will go on you know it's it's a it's a difficult thing and I, and i remember uh i think this was the day this was 2003 2004 i guess um um and even before that years before that i heard of the fact that when we started our uh, south location okay all people search south uh, at that point there was only one location which is uh, central okay which was meeting in several the church was small but i remember that um, that the pastor it was just pastor and one person one other person right i I've, i've heard that they would come all the way from the side of town which means you know where the airport is jakur is go all the way to jayanagar okay from here to jayanagar would be about maybe uh, i don't know 20 kilometers or so 20 25 kilometers if you if you look at it one way so you're talking about that travel <clears throat> opening the shutter arranging the chairs and no one will come <laughs> i'm talking about the early days of church not even a single person there but going there praying worshiping closing coming back sunday after sunday okay and going to the second location to preach now this happened for a few months right so that was the that was a discipline that was required you know even i'm sure by saturday evening itself there'll be one strange you know feeling inside oh do i need to go i wish someone else would go and do it that there's no one else right and this happened for <clears throat> sunday after sunday till the first person came and this continued right and that kind of discipline is required and so this worship leader this you know pastor pastor ashi they would go do that very faithfully uh and they saw the fruit of it you know today it's grown and so on so, so every church location you see it started small but it required you know yes the call of god gifting of god all that but it requires this you know capability or this characteristic of discipline okay so without that everything else will be everything else will be wasted right? because we won't show up there we won't be there for the anointing to work we won't be there for you know the for, for the gifting to be displayed or to minister to another person right so what you really don't want to do right you do it in that moment so that in future there'll be a um there'll be fruit right there'll be effectiveness okay um and also it's paying the price so that for the little things so that you can receive the bigger things bigger reward okay um being disciplined in our thoughts being disciplined in our emotions being disciplined in our actions because you know that is what will uh enable us to have discipline thoughts leading to our how we feel and also our actions okay to to increase discipline strengthen the work habit okay now john maxwell has written many books on leadership on on uh, teams many books right so somebody asked him you know how are you able to write so many books because he's also a busy man traveling um you know having speaking engagements so people ask you know how 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 do you do that so he says every day he will sit and he will write it could be one word one line one paragraph one page few pages but every day he will sit and write something okay so that's the thing every day he will sit and write something whether he feels like it some days he might feel like it and he might write a lot some days he may not feel like it Right? but every day he will sit and do so making it a habit right doing the, whether we like it or not will really strengthens it increases our discipline okay um and maybe something sometimes it it requires us to do something radically something like a challenge take it as a challenge and say okay i i want to try it out you know for the next 21 days or next 30 days you know i want to do this i want to do this take it as a short term thing so that you know it becomes a habit and then uh we see that um we are more disciplined right it becomes part of us third one is also to watch your tongue what are the words that you are saying 
uh, what are the confessions that you are making about yourself, about the situations, right? Okay, so that's about discipline. Okay, we lock, look at one more. Okay, enlarging, meaning when we say enlarging, we are saying talking about adding value to the team member, bringing value to the team member. It could be teaching them something, it could be sharing something, it could be facilitating something, right, to a team member. Like suppose you notice that a team member is actually struggling in one area. Okay, maybe they are not able to do it because they don't have the learning, nor do they have the skill. Okay, so if you can bring in that skill, if you have that skill, if you have that learning, and if you bring it, then it becomes something that you add value to. And I remember another person who used to be a volunteer in church. Um, did you all get that book? Um, I see uh, uh, that, that book which was given. A lot. No, 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 didn't get the book. Okay. So that was written by that uh, person. And um, so when he was actually here in India, India and working in the company, you know, he, he knew uh, Microsoft Excel really well. Okay. So he, he saw that other, there were others who were struggling right, with Microsoft Excel. So then he said, OK, I'll teach. And then this is outside of work. Okay. So they were all part of the office, but they were struggling. So he saw that, and he said, OK outside of office time that he will teach them right so he he said one saturday you come i will take about two hours i will teach on microsoft excel so a few people came and then he taught them and they were greatly benefited so the office took notice of it and then said hey you know you don't have to do it outside of office time you know within office time within your work hours you know we'll give you you know and you you train others on microsoft excel so so this is something he just saw a need. He said, OK, I need to add value to the team member. I see them struggling in this. I see them not competent in this. Now, let me, this skill I have, let me bring it to them. Let me train them so that it betters their life. It betters their ability, right? So it could be, it could be encouragement. It could be bringing skill and learning. It actually enlarges or brings about an increase in that person, okay, in, in the team. So who wins? The team wins, right? So if you realize that, okay, I have it, but I'm going to hold it close to me, and so so that I don't want the other person to do better, uh, then actually the team suffers because you do well, but then your teammate suffers, and then overall the team suffers, right? Okay. So speak words of edic edification, exhortation, comfort. Believe in others before they believe in you. Serve others before they serve you. Add value before they add value to you. Okay. Um, before they do it, you do it. Right. So think of how I can actually help, how I can benefit this person, right? Um, because of what I have. How how can I bring about positive change in this person? Okay. Now the thing is, if the person is uh, you know likable and pleasing and all that, it's easier. Right, but what if that person is, you know, not like that, right? Not grateful, etc. You know, as long as they are willing to learn, then we can do it. You know, we can't do it against their will, right? We can't force. Uh, as long as they are willing to receive, willing to learn, we can actually go ahead and do that, right? Okay. Okay. We'll look at uh, the rest uh, in the next class. So we have about. Um, yeah, 17 things. And with that, we come to end of the, uh, the teamwork section, right? Okay. Thank you. We'll stop here. God bless.